Hi guys and welcome back to Nick's Home Renovation. In this video I'll be explaining the order of renovating a bathroom like this. Num from number one, the stripper, all the way through to number 10, the painting and siliconing. I'll be giving you the length of time this takes, the trades involved, and then an approximate cost. So hopefully you guys can handle your own bathroom renovation and manage it all yourself and save you guys some money. If, for those of you that haven't subscribed to my channel, please click the red button in the bottom right hand corner and I'll start with number one, which is one of my favourites actually, which is the strip out. This can be a little bit tricky in a bathroom compared to other rooms in the house as you might need some technical knowledge, um, how to cap the water off, but you could always, as a precaution, turn the water completely off to the property and slowly remove little bits and bobs always have a bucket at hand and a tip a carpenter actually told me once is always have a black bin liner at hand as well as that can fit anywhere and catch a small amount of water really easily where sometimes buckets can't. The strip out I would say can take two to three days to remove the bath, remove the sink, remove all the tiles off the wall. You'll probably need an SDS hammer drill or you can do it with a hammer and a chisel getting the tiles off the wall. And I have found in the past that if your house is particularly old, you can have the dreaded tile upon tile. My record is four, where they've literally, over the years, renovated, not stripped off the old tile. And I've had four layers of tiles. And like all these things, it might take half an hour to an hour to strip a whole room of tiles, which is really quick. And it can often take double that time to actually bag it up and go and take it to the skip. So I would allow two to three days if you're doing that yourself as number one. Number two is any structural work. So in this bathroom here, we had to remove a wall um, and install a beam to support that wall. So you have to allow longer for that. This is usually something that you need a structural engineer to tell you about calculations, whether it's a load bearing wall and a builder to install the beam or install whatever is needed um, to support the room. If you don't have that structural work, obviously you can completely dismiss this, but what usually happens in bathroom installations from my experience is especially in those old Victorian properties, you have a separate toilet and a separate bathroom and many, many people knock down the wall. So just find out beforehand whether it's structural or not. If it's not, then you can probably do it yourself and take it down bit by bit, but I'd allow two to three days as it's a big job and a messy job and it can take some time. Number three is bespoke carpentry. So in this example here, really good bathroom to show you. We've got lots of bespoke carpentry. We've got the shower zone with a niche. So this is all stud work back here. And it also had to allow for the depth for the shower valve and made the plumber's life a lot easier as well. And we also created this zone in here with a cupboard and um, a light well for just displaying the personal touches as well. So bespoke carpentry, is usually the third bit and can really help the plumbers and electricians as well because it um, gives them space to run their cables and pipes. Number four is the plumbers and electrician, which is called the first fix. Um, so they, they then come in, they rewire it, they do their plumbing and they get everything ready. At this stage, in some situations, you can actually second fix the bath as well because the next step is plastering and sometimes the plasterers want the bath already in um, as it usually gets wedged in the corner and they just plaster down to the bath. But pre predominantly, number four is just the first fix, plumbing and electrics. Um, the bespoke carpentry, sorry for number three, takes one to two days. And number four, first fix, plumbing and electrics, two to three days as well. Number five is plastering. That's always a day in a bathroom, really. Um, most bathrooms aren't very large. Um, so I'd be surprised if it needed more than one day unless you were doing something a bit more bespoke. Number six is install bathroom fittings. This can be anything from three to seven days, depending on the size of the bathroom, what you're installing. Um, but it can be quite time consuming, as you can imagine, even in a small bathroom like this, you've got floating shelves, floating toilets, floating vanity. Number seven is the tiling. Always a really nice stage, as it really, you've seen those bare walls for so long, and they can come in really quickly. I know tilers that could be really fast and they generally do all the walls in a day and then they come back the next day and do the flooring in usually a morning because in a bathroom like this there's actually not much flooring because the bath's taking up a lot of the space if you've got a toilet that's sitting on the floor that takes a lot of space same with a sink um, and even in this example in a two meter by 
sort of one and a half meter bathroom. It's usually very quick. So I would say the tiling is generally done in a day and a half, two days, um, unless you had a more complicated tile. Number eight is carpentry. Things like hanging the door behind me, hanging the doors on the stud work they built here to create a cabinet for the bathroom fittings, and then anything else bespoke, like you might have waterproof skirting, um, anything like that, or boxing or pipes, for example. So that would allow one to two days for that at that stage. Then it's second fix plumbing and electrics. So coming back in and fitting all the electrics and the plumbing that I mentioned earlier, that's usually around two to three days and as your number nine. And then the really exciting stage, number 10, takes between two and three days and that's painting and silicone. Um, and it does, isn't even though this room doesn't need a lot of painting, it's often very difficult for them doing one go because they're waiting for things to dry. So they might come one day, do all the woodwork and one coat and the ceiling and have to come back the next day and the next day. So I would say three days on average for a room like this to get fully completed, even though the work actually is probably added up, could be done in a day if possible. The average bathroom probably takes four to five weeks on average, I would say to do. And I would say they range between eight and 15,000 on average. It's really one of those rooms that can really toss up quickly. And I would say five, 10 years ago, you could have done a bathroom for 5,000 pounds, but the average now is more like 10 to 12, and then in larger ones, 15,000 pounds. Depends on the fittings and everything you go for, um, but it's really, it can be an expensive room for, such, for something that is used for not a lot of time every day. Thanks to everyone for watching and subscribing. If you think there's anything I've missed or anything you'd like me to ask me or to mention, please get in touch and I'll try and help everyone I can. For those undertaking your own bathroom renovations, good luck and feel free to ask me anything. Thanks to everyone for watching and subscribing. Please click that red button and I'll see you on the next one.